This is a very beginner epoxy resin carving video. Um, in this video, I carved this old fellow in the epoxy resin using a Dremel flex shaft. And um, you can see here I did some lighter cases. And uh, just to show you guys what burrs to use, um, I'm, I'm newer at epoxy pouring. This is the stuff that I use from uh, Amazon. But you guys can use whatever you want. This is just the carving bits to show you. Hey everybody, so I thought I'd be doing a voiceover here. So this um, is a epoxy pour I did maybe a week ago. It is, uh, that's the, the silicone mold I bought on Amazon. And um, the bottom's red with uh, the pigments in there. And the top is just some gold stuff I had left over from a pour. I do believe I used the deep pour epoxy for this. And I also uh, warmed up the epoxy in warm water. In the case when it was still in the case, so you got less bubbles. Um, this is just a project that I want to work on. I'll say it later in the video that, uh, or I said earlier in the video, I'm not professional at epoxy pour stuff, period. But um, I do have about six, seven years carving with the Dremel, so it's I will figure out what's the best bit to uh, carve this. And what I'm going to be doing is, um, I'm normally a wood carver. Um, I love carving the wood spirit faces, like that's the old man faces with the beards. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Here's a thing I said I bought on Amazon. It's a wine top holder bottle thing. And um, the lighter cases are super fun to do. Um, you can just use the cheaper epoxy that I showed the video for these. And uh, just I just use like a little diamond burrs to carve these quickly and give them to friends. You can make them different colors. I'll leave a link to the uh, later cases below. But uh, super fun because you, just pouring, here's the later case itself. You get uh, two, two of them in a set of one. Because um, just the epoxy pouring, yeah, it's fun to see the colors and stuff like that. But it's also a lot funner to uh, carve it and get the colors to pop out. So I just thought that I'd make this video for the very beginning people epoxy if they're kind of getting bored of just doing the pours and they want to learn how to carve it. There you can see all the later cases that I've done with the different colors and stuff like that. I got no friends to hand them out to. <laughs> just kidding. I'll hand these out pretty soon. There's one uh, flower I did one for. Uh, it was supposed to be white and red, so it turned out to be pink and red. And I gave it the black wash after I uh, carved it. So anyways, back to this piece. Um, epoxy is super, super messy to carve. Um, in this video, I'm wearing long sleeves. You can wear those surgical gloves. 100% um, a, a dusk mask. My When I'm carving my table, you'll see below, see those, dot, those holes below? It sucks the dust in to a uh, dust collector I have set up in the closet. And yeah, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, I'm talking about the dust getting sucked in there. But what we're going to do, do is um, we're going to go over some different types of burrs and um, show you guys my opinion what the best burr is to curve epoxy with. Burrs, bits, same thing. Bits, burrs, and and uh, Dremel 4000. I'm running with the Dremel flex shaft. And I'm also using a micro carver. Here's a micro carver. This is a bigger bit. I'm just kind of shaping it a bit. Um, that's a cuts all burr in there. I'll go over that in a bit. I'm just shaping it before I do the carving. When you carve epoxy, it always goes white. It creates white dust. So 100%, please wear a dust mask, the gloves, and a long sleeve, because you don't want this stuff to get into You don't even really want it to get into your pores because, well, it's epoxy. It's toxic. I don't know if that food safe stuff's toxic or not, but I know I wear long sleeve sh um, shirts. To get it stop going in your pores so much. There, I'm talking about the uh, dust getting sucked down into my dust collector table. So there, it's shaped. Um, I'm going to draw on the um, here. I'm showing the bigger. This is a ram. This is a quarter inch carver. Okay, so this carver that spins at fifty thousand RPMs. You can do this. So here's the Dremel. I do suggest get yourself the flex shaft. For the Dremel, if you're going to do this, because it's like carving with a pencil, right? So that flex shaft hooks up to the Dremel. Like a Dremel 2000 and up will work for the flex shafts. You can even buy a knockoff Dremel with the flex shaft. 
I just like a when or a whatever. But I just think the knockoff Dremels, the flex shafts aren't very good. The best flex shaft in the market is definitely the Dremel flex shaft. But the Dremel flex shaft does fit to the cheaper um, Amazon knockoff Dremels. But this is what I'm going to be using. This is a micro carver. The engine's in the handpiece. It's super, it's like carving with a pen. Um, it hooks up to a machine over to the right. Um, and yeah, it's awesome to carve. And I got a little tiny diamond burr in there. So I'm going to start off with the diamond burr. I do do the lighter cases. I know I said with the little diamond burrs. You can buy little sets of them I'll show later. Spit test. So anyway, I'm not really used to doing the voiceovers, but this is a voiceover because I wasn't uh, recording the audio when I was filming this. So there's the old man face. We call them wood spirits when you carve um, in wood. Those are my favorite things to carve. They're the funnest because they can be anything you want them to be. Just uh, opening up your imagination. So here's a little tiny diamond bit that um, I'm going to start off with. Just to cut in my lines so I don't cut them off. Here's bigger diamond bit burrs. Diamond burrs also come in different grits. So these ones are 80 grit, which are more aggressive than they, I think you can even get them in 60 grit. Then they get finer, so like 100, 120 grit, 200 grit. But uh, I like carving with the more aggressive bits. I don't have time to uh, do fine burr carvings, fine bit carvings. I just want to carve it and get it done. So put your dust mask on, long sleeve. I'm not wearing gloves. I, I just can't stand wearing gloves. Anything I'm doing, I like to have control with my hands and feel the tool with my hands when I'm doing it. But uh, sorry, I'm just turning up my machine a bit. So just pretend this is your Dremel flex shaft. So there I am just carving the, um, the outlines in. Probably about a quarter inch deep. But you can see how epoxy carves super easy. I'm cutting in the forehead. But like this video is not about the carving itself. It's about what bits work best for the um, to carve it, in my opinion. So there you see I got it all cut in. We'll try and do a little bit of uh, forming. With that little bit, it's too small to use for this. It's, it works great for the lighter cases, so I can carve one in about 10, 15 minutes. And even if you carve through the lighter case, like you cut right through it, doesn't matter. Just incorporate it into the uh, carving. Negative space. Excuse me, I'm going to have a sip of coffee here. So, yeah, I'm just probably preaching about the dust. You know, I suggest do this outdoors with a fan pushing towards you if you don't have a dust collector table. It's friggin' messy. I will not I will not deny that. So here's cuts all burrs, okay? The what the black one is the more most aggressive. That's the cuts all flame burr. That's my go-to burr right there for wood carving. You see these burrs have little spikes on them. So they leave marks in the wood or the epoxy. So this, this one I'm showing now is less aggressive. So this would be the silver one. It's a plugged up a bit. So you can see that there, there's three different types of burrs for, there's d many different shapes. There's three different types of aggressivenesses for the burrs. There's the extreme, there's this, which is the black. There's the silver, which is the original. Then there's the gold, which is fine. Here's all three. I'm going to try and show you the differences from right to left. And there's different shapes, so that would be a taper burr there. So you got a aggressive to the right, middle, medium, left, the softest. But that's my go-to burr right there. What I'm going to do is start shaping the face out with the aggressive bit. Burr bit, same thing. I haven't already said that. I know I repeat myself self often. This is not really script. I don't have anything written down. So... There's the bit in there, and I'm going to run this at about 40,000 RPMs. I think the Dremels run at 35,000 RPMs. My Dremel flex shaft, my Dremel 4000 anyways. So you can remove a lot of epoxy with that burr right there super fast. I'm going to have to edit this video when I'm done here, the voiceover, and 
zoom in so you guys can see how fast it's removing the epoxy. And I'm always trying to make it so the dust is getting sucked into the table. Like I said, it's not about the carving, it's about what bits I'm using. So you can see how fast that is removing the epoxy. Okay, so I had to go back and do some editing, speed things up a bit. So there you can see how fast it's removing the uh, epoxy. So you can see the marks this bit is leaving. Like I said, this is good for fast removal of material. If you want to get to where you want to get to, start doing details. This piece won't have too much details on it. It's not my plan, but you can do great details in uh, epoxy carving. Now I'm switching out the burr. I'm going to put in, I believe, the um, silver one or the gold one. Yeah, there's no sense going to the silver. Let's see how well the gold one works by uh, removing epoxy and marks in it. Less marks, hopefully. So there I'm just kind of shaping the forehead down. And I sped everything up a bit. This is running three times the speed. You guys don't really need to see me curving. I just want to show the marks it leaves and how well it does. It works good. It curves just like um, super fast. And um, just kind of working it a bit. Hopefully I'll show you the marks it leaves. Yeah, so there we go. It's a lot cleaner. Less marks, but you can still see them there. Do spit tests. So you need to make it more um, you need to make it more smooth than that. So here's a diamond burr set I got. I believe I got these on Amazon or eBay or something. These are 80 grit, so they're fairly aggressive. That's those things about those micro motors um, hand pieces. They switch out the burrs so quick. This is the it's the Ram iCube carver that I'm using. Ram Products iCube. So when I'm carving that, I spin it up, I can st see it's still leaving marks. So you don't want to have that much marks on your carving when it's done. But there is a way to get rid of them. There I am cutting in inside the mustache. You can see how deep and fast that carved there. And this is sped up too. If anybody wants to learn wood carving, I got tons of videos how to carve these old guys step by steps and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that the epoxy people will be watching this video. And... Uh, Bring the heater comments. I don't care. Tell me I'm doing it all wrong. I don't care. So they're just doing a little bit more details with that uh, diamond burr. I decided the diamond burr, it worked good, but I wasn't happy with it. And um, I don't know what I was saying there. But um, I think it's time to, uh, yeah, I'm just saying how dusty it is. It's such a dirty, dusty thing to carve. It's like carving soapstone. Soapstone's um, super dusty to carve, too. So here is metalworking burrs and aluminum cutting burrs, all right? These are packs of 10 that you get on Amazon. Um, all you do is just Google Amazon, not Google, but Amazon metalworking. One-eighth are the bits that fit inside your Dremel. And you get sets of 10 for like 10, 15 bucks. You can see, so that's a metal working burr. Some people get confused between the two burrs. Now these are aluminum cutting burrs. The aluminum cutting burrs are more, way more aggressive than the metal working burrs because the flutes, which are the cutters, are bigger. And they're more, a bit more expensive. I think these are 15 or $20 for the aluminum cutters. You can get the metal working burr for like 13 bucks a set of 10 so the left that's aluminum right here see how you see the flutes the cutters it's like curving with a chisel now there's the metal working one on the, on the left where my finger is see how less aggressive it is and they have little slits down the flutes so i'm going to try both of these see which one works better yada 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 Okay, now what else am I doing here? I'm not too sure. Now here's little diamond working burrs you can get on Amazon. You get like, I don't know, 100 burrs for 10 bucks or something. You can just uh, Amazon diamond burrs. So let's see here. What am I going to use first? Metal working burr or the aluminum burr? 
they're also the metal working burrs and aluminum working burrs are also really good for cutting a hardwood. They last a long time. And I believe I got the metal working burr in there. So I want to kind of shape the face with this, carve in the details. Now let's do a quick sample. Yeah, that's the metal working one. And let's see how clean it looks when I cut it. There you go. Boom. I'm going to have to come back again. and Yeah, so there you go. Look how clean that is. So I haven't done any deep cuts with it yet, but I'm cutting fairly deep there, blending everything in together. Taking the forehead down a bit. So yeah, that metal working burr is actually working pretty great. See how quickly it's removing the material there. I'm not going to lie to you guys, everybody. On this video, the best burr that I've used was 100% the metal working burr. Okay, so I finished carving it. Let's do a quick uh, spit test here. That's how you can see the uh, colors popping. See there, see there how clean it cut because you can see the colors in there. Okay, so. I've done all the carving. This is a very basic wood spirit. Well, it's epoxy spirit. I didn't even carve eyes in there. Just left it basic. This is with the metal working burr. So 100% my opinion, the best thing to carve it with is the metal working burr. Now, so I'm, on, I'm not going to confuse everybody here. I'm just going to leave a link to the metal working burrs in the description below on Amazon. Now you get a smaller set too of metal working burrs. Here's a littler set. So you get 20 here and this is like 15, 20 bucks. And the bigger set, you get 10 and they're cheaper. So I'll leave a link. I'll put big metal working burrs, small metal working burrs. And also if you're going to use a die grinder to carve epoxy or your Fordham, you can get them in quarter inch too to fit those at uh, the die grinder or the Fordhams. All right. So this is where you'll see if you got any little air bubbles in there in the epoxy that you poured because well you'll see little white dots in there. I'm very new at pouring epoxy. I'm not a pro. I'm just starting out on it. And I do want to say one thing like I think I already said that this is super super dusty work. Long sleeves, uh those gloves if you want to wear don't wear cloth gloves when you're using those bits. Use like um, those surgical gloves or whatever. This, like these lighter cases, I just carve them with a diamond burr. I hit them with the Scotch Brite, then I spray them with this uh, Russell oleum, satin clear. You can get matte. So that's how I do these, just super quick, and they make great gifts for friends. Okay. So now this has a little bit of scuffs on it. Still, it's a little bit dirty. Here is the Dremel Flex Shop. I run a Dremel 4000. You can run any Dremel you want. This is a sanding mandrel, and this is Scotch Brite. I'm going to turn on the fan. I'm going to hit this with the Scotch Brite, and that's all I'm going to do. You, you know, you could polish. I got all the different polishes and stuff like that, but I couldn't be bothered. Uh, I'm not a professional at anything I do, and I just want to kind of get her done. So I'm going to hit it with this. Okay, I'll hit her with this. Then I got a plan because this is going to be a series of uh, videos. Okay, so here you can see it's all sounded with the Scotch Bright. Um, I didn't really go over that too well. It's a sanding mandrel. This is 3M Scotch Bright. I don't suggest getting the stuff from the dollar store. It doesn't last that long. And I just cut it up into little pads. See, it's got a screw on there. And then boom. One, two, three. Uh, turn your Dremel down when you're doing this because you don't want to fry your Dremel. This is a lot of pressure putting on the Dremel. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just go rinse this in water and bring it back, see how it looks. 
and uh, dry it out and then do an epoxy pour over top of this for the next video. Okay, so here it is with water on it. So pretend that's a finish. So next video, I'm going to uh, do a translucent epoxy pour over this. And then I'm going to carve another face on it. I'm going to put it, where's that box? I'm going to put it back in this mold here. Actually, I don't want to get it wet, but I'm going to put it back in here and I'm going to do a, another pour over top of this with maybe like a light blue color. So I hope this is able to help somebody that uh, thought about doing a epoxy um, carving. There you go. That's how simple it is. You can do flowers, dolphins, whatever you want to do, whales, trees. It's fun, but once again, it's super, super dusty. So just be on uh, standby for that. And those uh, metalworking birds will be listed below. Thanks.